Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel. Hello and welcome to another edition of Getting to Know You. I'm your host, Robert Jakeway. One of the most active departments within the Town of Colony is the Youth Bureau, which is located on Central Avenue. Today's guest is Mary Burke, the Executive Director. Let's go meet her and find out what the Youth Bureau is and what services it provides. Mary, thank you so much for agreeing to come today. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. Um, before we start talking about the Youth Bureau and finding out exactly what the services are, are, that are offered there and what you do there, um, can you give our viewers some of your background so that we know a little bit more about you? Sure. Um, I've been with the town for about 20 years, and um, prior to coming to work with the town, I worked um, at Vander Heiden Hall and then Parsons Child and Family Center in the group homes. Um, I was a group home supervisor at one point. And then went back to school to get my master's degree in planning and worked for the city of Albany for a while in community development and then came to work for the town in the planning and economic development department, which at the time was engineering and planning. Um, I started to get involved in the Colony Community Partnership, which was a group of uh, people who were interested in doing something for youth in the town. And that led to being um, transferring over to the Youth Bureau and being a community services planner. And then went to work as the town supervisor's assistant for two and a half years. And last year when Dennis McLaughlin, the prior um, previous director of the Youth Bureau retired, I applied for the position and um, received it, interviewed and received it. So you're relatively new there, but you're yes. not really as far as the town goes, no. and, and clearly your experience you know, leads you to, to this particular right. position. Um, the Youth Bureau, uh, I know it's located at 1635 Central Avenue? 1653 no. Central 16 Avenue. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, um, and it's in what they call the community center. Right, which used to be uh, elementary school in South Colony. It was, it was an old elementary school, which the town, well actually our community development department purchased it, I believe, in the early 1980s and then the town purchased it from community development did some renovations and um, you know the youth bureau grew out of that there were people working over there uh, that were involved you know with youth and eventually the youth bureau was created now i've talked to to brian hogan who's the director of the colony youth centers um, and they have a particular focus with the youth in the town. So uh, not to be confused with that, that's not a town department. This is a town department. Yes, and, it is. And, okay. Um, <laughs> what, what are the types of things that you um, offer in, in terms of youth? We do a variety of things, Bob. Uh, one of our, probably our biggest program or largest program, uh, we have two programs that I would say are fairly large, which would be our wraparound program. Um, that which consists of two components. There's a before and after school piece and then we provide the other half day of kindergarten to South Colony kindergarten students. Not all of them. We take 40 children so they would spend half of their day at one of the elementary schools and then South Colony buses them to our building where they would spend the afternoon and would get a kindergarten curriculum, an okay. extension of them, you know, their kindergarten curriculum, morning or afternoon, depending on when they're actually at school. And then we have the before and after school component. We serve in total in that program 100 kids um, between K, K and 4, kindergarten through fourth grade. And it, we open at 7.30 in the morning and we close at 6 in the evening. The other program that we have that's very large is our summer camp program where we can accommodate up to about 190 to 200 
kids for eight weeks throughout the summer. We start the week after school ends and we end the second week in August. <clears throat> and um, that program it varies as to how many kids are attending any given week, um, but it, it can we can take up to about 190, 200 kids. We also run a FOCUS, a program called FOCUS, over at Shaker Junior High School. It's a mentoring program for eighth graders who have to be recommended to the program by their guidance counselors. And <clears throat> that program is mainly for kids who are having problems with their home, you know, with at their academics and also kids who need to improve upon their social skills. So that program ha it runs Monday, Wednesday, and Tuesday, Thursday. There's two separate components and there's about 16 junior high students in each one of those. The P we do that in conjunction with the junior high. So there are also teachers and teachers and assistants invo involved, involved. And um, Barb Mahaney, uh, a youth services specialist for the Youth Bureau, she supervises our staff, which are four college students. And our role in the program is to help the kids with their homework, getting organized, and also to provide a recreational component. We bring the kids out into the community on field trips, and we also do recreation over at the school, whether it be in the gym or outside, depending on the weather. And then they go to um, Liberty Bridge, which is a, a maze um, in the fall, and they go bowling, they play laser tag. There's a number of different things that they do, and the field trips are kind of the, throughout the year that we, we do those. We so this, this is integrated with <coughs> their, their school day, right? They still yes, go to school? They, yes, they come from their last class right to focus okay. and they take home a later bus so um, and part of the time is spent on socialization the other part of the time is spent on homework and academic school skills uh, the teachers are involved they run you know they do like study skills um, with the kids they kind of are the liaison between the uh, the academic piece and our piece you know they come back to us and say you know, here's what these kids owe in terms of homework, this is what they need to be working on, and they, they also participate in helping with the kids. Sounds like a great service. It is. Focus is a, really is a great program. I want to slip back a little bit to the, uh, to the wraparound program, and, and they they're come for basically a half day. Now, you incorporate um, actual teachers, uh, yes. certified teachers. We have two certified teachers that work during the day, during the school day, and they each, you know, they each have a class in the morning and then they each have a class in the afternoon. We also have a few people who work as uh, teacher assistants, you know, they assist in the classroom and that also enables us to have a few more, you know, children in each of those sessions so that yes that's what and it is an extension of the kindergarten curriculum and the, the school district itself chooses the the, the children no, or no these children the parents have to register them for the program and we usually hold registration in February um, and that that's pretty much how we do it it's okay. done on a first come first serve basis we do give preference to siblings of you know other children that are in the program okay. so if somebody's in second grade and was in you know was in our before and after school program and now they have a sibling that's going to kindergarten we would give you know give preference to them. Now is there a fee associated with this? Yes there is and that fee varies because that program is somewhat incorporated into the before and after school piece of things the maximum is eleven dollars a day. Oh, okay. If they go to the if they go to the kindergarten wrap, it's eleven dollars a day. Before and after school program, we charge five fifty an hour, and the maximum we'll charge is eleven dollars. Okay, okay. Now I think I'm correct. There's also is there a special ed uh, class there or no? We in our building, South Colony uses um, a number of classrooms for the Central Avenue Learning Center and it's an okay. alternative program for 7th, 8th and they just expanded it to ninth graders this year. They're not necessarily, they're not special ed kids, they're kids who are having 
difficulty functioning in the normal classroom setting okay. at either Lysakil Middle School, Colony Central, or Sand Creek or Colony Central. Um, they come to our program, it's a, you know, there's smaller class sizes and therefore they get more individualized attention. We also rent out space in the building to the BOCES program and we have several different facets of that okay. operating <coughs> there. Now, you, do you manage the building itself? No, the building is managed by our Office of General Services. So that's, you know, if there's a, we have a maintenance staff in there who works for, you know, Doug Sippel. Right. Um, and they pretty much keep, you know, keep the building clean, um, keep on top of things, make sure that any repairs that need to be made are made. If a toilet backs up, they're there to fix it. What we do is we pretty much manage the rental of the space. In addition to the people that are there five days a week through during the day, we also rent the space out to a lot of different groups within the community uh, for, you know, whether it be volleyball, basketball. CDPHP does a number of their courses there. They run oh, their, I didn't know that. Yeah, they run their blood pressure course there The and some of the other classes. Um, we have a woman's, I believe it's basketball team that, that plays there uh, once a week. We have a volleyball team. We have an aerobics class that operates every Saturday morning. And in addition to that, we, we also have, um, uh, you know, like Boy Scouts that may have their adult meetings there. Little League does the registration there. The, the, there's a, it's a pretty diverse. Lots happening. The yeah. parking lot looks like it's full yes, all it's the time full, and into the yeah. evening hours, as you yeah. said. So now, um, <coughs> you do other things besides the wraparound program yes. in the summer. So let's go. Well, we we also do in in addition the as kind of an offshoot. We do toddler tales on Friday mornings, only when school is operating. Like for instance, this Friday there is no school, so there wouldn't be any toddler tales. And Toddler Tales is from 10 to 11.30. It is, we use a classroom adjacent to the gymnasium. And it's pretty much for parents and caregivers who want to bring their toddlers in. They get to run all over the gym. We have a lot of toys that they can play with. And then there's always a craft going on in the classroom that um, they can participate in. And usually a story. We have a staff that re reads a story and, and supervises the craft and they have a snack um, and there's a dollar dollar donation we also do another program called caring connections which is three days a week and that you have toddler tales anyone can come to caring connection is something that you have to register for we take 10 children and um, parents slash caregivers 10 to 11 30 again and it's really um, supposed to be or is a support group f for parents and caregivers to get together kind of have some adult contact exchange ideas and our staff we have a staff person one person who keeps the kids occupied with a craft or a game or a story that too just runs during you know when there's school we have uh, Lisa Haywood Drake who's okay. been with the town for quite some time she runs the youth employment service which really right now isn't the youth employment service it's somewhat is in transition um, both north and we do that lisa works in both shaker high school and colony central high school she does what's called a prep for employment program and she is working with kids who have special needs that um, can't necessarily just go out and get a job in the community, you know, in the community. They, they need some help um, developing their skills. She has a whole curriculum that she uses. When I say it's in transition, um, both schools are looking at doing, um, lo looking at doing programs for disenfranchised youth, which are youth who don't really have special needs but have fallen between the cracks. Okay. And right now, everything is, is just, she's still doing prep for employment, and we're not sure where we're going next year, whether she'll still be doing prep for employment in both schools, doing it in one and not the other, or not doing it in either, 
and just working with these kids who are disenfranchised and also need some special help in terms of getting, you know, getting a job, like how to fill out an application, uh, what you wear to an interview, you know, and um, we're also looking at doing some workshops. Uh, she's looking at doing some workshops and job fairs. How are these, how are these students identified? They're usually identified by the schools. The schools okay. have, both schools have a really good handle on uh, the kids that are just, that they haven't bonded or identified with the school. One of the, you know, kids that have maybe just transferred in in 10th or 11th grade, um, students who are, uh, have just immigrated to this country, maybe don't have a good handle on the language, don't really know anybody else and they're just kind of out there and uh, there isn't anything that really connects them to the school. The other thing we've heard from both schools is that when they get into high school, a lot of times kids who were involved in sports and, you know, usually sports because now you're dealing with such, a, you know, there's a lot more competition. Right. So the child that maybe played football or lacrosse in middle school maybe isn't going to make it onto a football or lacrosse team in the high school and um, and that may have been what bonded them to the school before and now they don't have that and they're just out there kind of floating out there yeah they're kind of floating out there not you know don't and and then there's the whole group of kids that uh, that the schools are seeing that cannot um, they don't have plans to go to college in the future and the, uh, they aren't really um, cut out for the whole region's course of study and they're on the verge of dropping out. They're okay. kids who just don't really see what the point is in finishing up high school and um, that's something that South Colony is really looking at. How, how do we keep these kids in school? What, you know, what can we do? What can they do? And, and we're trying to help to keep those kids in place through 12th grade. Oh, what a mission. Does, does she actually go and do this, most of the work, in the school yes, itself? Yes, she's in the schools four mornings a week, okay. um, sometimes into the afternoon, depending on what, you know, what her schedule is, and, um, and then is in the office on Friday. If someone um, who's viewing this um, feels that maybe their their child would be a candidate, uh, is it best for them to communicate with the school? Yes, um, they would way? need to. They would need to communicate with the guidance, their, their child's guidance counselor. And kids at the middle school level as well as the high school level have guidance counselors, and that is who you would have to talk to and say, you know, I have a concern, and, and would my child be, you know, appropriate? for a okay. certain program. All of our programs, whether it be prep for employment or focus, the programs we do in the school, we have to get permission from the parents before the child can actually start the program. So the parents have to be on board with, with what's going on. Okay. So that, you know, it's a, we do it in conjunction with everyone. And Lisa has meetings with the parents because the students she works with, she work, works with, also usually are involved, have other services at school. Okay. And that's... Now, I know that we've had here at the library um, these courses um, that, we, that are focus on babysitting. So there's a yes. babysitting component. We also do a Red Cross babysitting class. And we run that um, during the vacation that the kids have in April. And we also, we do a morning and an afternoon class in April. And then we do one in August um, over here at the library. Okay. And then I believe we also do one in February again. Again, morning and afternoon components. Now so they get a certification? They actually certification? get a certification from the Red Cross. We are, Lisa and Barb both run the babysitting courses and they attend, um, classes at the Red Cross that teach them how to teach the Red Cross babysitting class. Now, should someone want a, a good babysitter, a certified babysitter, right. do they call you well, and ask they for used names? To. Or? We used to have, we used to keep a list of names of the kids. And we've gotten out of that because of, of liability. We used to have this list and we would send it to people if they called and, um, you know, said, gee, could you give me a, a list of some babysitters? 
we don't do that anymore. We, we also used to keep a list of kids who were available to do odd jobs for people in the community. And some things happened, and we just decided that it, it probably was best not to be sending kids into people's homes when we don't really know what the... Could be your life. It's your liability, right, definitely. exactly. So, um, I, I was going to ask, how does someone find a babysitter? Just through word of mouth? It uh, has to be through word of mouth. It really has to be through word of mouth. Some people post, you know, post something on bulletin boards, community bulletin boards that they're willing to babysit. Um, sometimes kids put things in people's mailboxes in their neighborhoods that, you know, they're available to babysit if, if somebody's looking for a babysitter. But that's, you know, it really has to be Should true. people look for the certified babysitter? Yes, they should yeah, look yeah. for the certified. Yeah, they okay. should because they learn CPR. Okay. Um, that's, you know, and they learn about, you know, they learn how to put together a safety kit. They learn, um, you know, what they need to do in case of an emergency. What happens if, if something, you know, if the child starts choking on something or if there's a fire in the house. You know, there's a lot of different uh, things that could go wrong. You would hope wouldn't go wrong, but could go wrong. And it would not be unlikely that a 13 or 14 year old child would panic sure. in a situation like that. We teach the kids how, you know, what to do if something does happen and, and goes wrong. The, I was going well, no, Go I was going to say, so we, uh, what I also want to add, this summer we also incorporated a 4-H component into our summer camp program, which was very, very well attended. It was for the kids that were in camp, the older kids, kids that are starting to age out of camp. By about 10, um, the girls still like coming, but most boys have had it. They're not <laughs> interested in being there anymore. And this gave them something different to do. Barb Mahaney and uh, one of our other staff, a part-time staff that works for us year-round, took the kids um, on, on several different 4-H explorations, and did, um, and the kids really enjoyed it. And we also did a program for kids who are aging out of camp. We ran six field trips for kids between the ages of 13 and 15. The most popular trip was to Hairspray down in New York City. They okay. got they got to go to lunch at Hard Rock Cafe, and then they got to see the show on Broadway, and then came home, and that was a, a big hit. We also uh, went to an amusement park, a couple of museums. This summer we're going to do two trips to New York City. We're going to be going uh, to see the Drowsy Chaperone on July 11th and then Wicked on um, August 15th. And Barb just was able to confirm that with a, a guy that we work with down in New York who sets these things up for schools. It's limited to about 18, you know, 17 to 18 kids. Can okay, go. so there is a there is a definite. Yeah, there is. A, yes. Sounds so, like and fun. And that, yeah, that was a we're, we found out last summer what was interesting and what wasn't. What, the what kids, they like, right? What they like and what they don't like. You know, we ran a trip to a field trip to West Point, but again, it only attracted you know a few kids. The kids that went had a great time. And, um, it, you know, it, it also provides a structured and safe activity for kids who are home during the day whose parents are working. So. Sounds terrific. Now, I know, because we, we know each other and we've talked, uh, the Youth Advisory uh, Board. We have the Youth Advisory Board, and the Youth Advisory Board is uh, uh, that, again, we work with S Colony Central, Shaker High School, and CBA, Christian Brothers Academy. And the Youth Advisory Board consists of school administrators, um, people from the community such as Nikki Caruso, the Assistant Director of CYC, okay. Violet Colitis, the Director of Colony Youth Court, um, and a few people, a few retired teachers. Uh, plus, we have, uh, you know, school principals, um, superintendents, assistant superintendents. Um, and we have representation, four to five kids from each of the schools that we meet once a month, the first Thursday of the month, and um, at lunchtime we have pizza and soda. And we, 
it's pretty much to be a youth advisory board. It's something that the kids, the kids are the ones we're looking to them. What do you, you know, what do you want to do this year? Uh, we have for the past several years we've done a talent show, where the, it's the tri school talent show, and you know they get they they audition groups in their school, and then you know we we pick a night. This year we're doing it over at Shaker High School. Last year it was at Conley Central, um, and the three schools you know, show their talent and then there's judges and there's prizes. We also do a three on three basketball tournament at Colony Central with, you know, and when I say it, it's not kid, the kids, they get other kids from their schools to participate. That has been very, very successful. Uh, and um, again, the, the first place team, the first, second, and third place teams get prizes. And I'm trying. We, we do service projects. Um, they serve dinner over at Beltram one night a month. Um, we right now are collecting makeup and jewelry, stuffed animals for the girls at St. Anne's for Christmas. For the holiday. Mm -hmm. Right for the holidays. In the past, we we did a collection of um, personal hygiene products for uh, residents over at the Anley Nursing Home. They, we have done Equinox, gone down and served dinner on Thanksgiving Day. We've um, done, you know, have done some things with the veterans. We do our Letters to Santa program, which the kids come in and they actually, you know, write, we get the letters and then they write back to the kids and address the They're sort of Santa's secretary. They're Santa's secretary, <laughs> yes. They are Santa's secretary. And they also volunteer at different events that the town holds. Uh, we did, the Youth Bureau is very involved with all of the different events that are held throughout the year over at the crossing. So we had kids that volunteered for the Harvest Fest, mm -hmm. um, the Halloween party, which is one of our events. That was something our kids wanted to do was a Halloween party, and we've been doing that annually for, for a number of years now. And we are on this coming, well, Monday, November 27th, we're doing the Christmas tree lighting over at the crossings. And now what time is that? Just so we, because you <coughs> mentioned the date. That is November 27th from 5 until 7, and there'll be fireworks at 5 after 6. So, okay. so there's a lot of activity, it's not it's just set. lighting the tree, it's a lot no, of No, there's a lot of other activity. We will start our Letters to Santa program. We also have a mural for the kids to decorate. Uh, in the main hearing room, there will be music by CBA's jazz band. There will also be a performance by um, dra international drama kids. Kids, kids right. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, um, and the library will be there reading really? Christmas stories, that, that too. And then there's going to be a cutout of the Grinch, Max, and Sally. That <laughs> kids can have their picture. If parents want to take their kids' picture. With that, they can. So yeah, there it's like is a real a family event. It's a vi yeah, this is are. a real family event, and HSBC um, has uh, you know offered to sponsor the fireworks. So right. that always makes right. the event more exciting. So we'll we'll post that. I think we post it on our, our bulletin yes, board on the station is. as well. Yeah. And and We're then we also do an Easter party okay. at Easter time. So. Okay. Yeah. We're getting close to the end of the program. Oh, all right. I feel like you know, there's a ton more things to talk about. You mentioned theater, and I know um, right. we're, we're working theater. together in Colony yes. Youth Theater. Yes. Um, and right now we're are thinking of selecting the show, and, and you had that for years before I joined. The, the yes, actually it used to be with Parks and Recreation. And uh, I took it over, well, was asked to, to you know, work with it and did uh, I'm going to say mm, probably you had it for two years two years mm -hmm. yeah so probably eight years ago and then was out of it for two years while I was working in the supervisor's office and now we'll be back doing it with you this summer so we'll do it in conjunction a and that's a that's a great program great that's program a really great kids. program for the kids um, especially uh, it's, it was when I first started it was really a lot of high school you know mainly high school kids and um, we've attracted a lot more middle school. And again, it's a, it's a safe, structured activity in the evening during the during summer. During the summer. Six weeks, seven weeks about. Right, yeah. 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 So. Um, now, we, is there anything we've missed? I'm trying to think, Bob. That's a good question. Um, 
we pretty well covered yeah, what, we've what covered, we have in front we've here. Covered, yeah, we've covered just about okay. everything, I think. Now, if somebody wants to get in touch with you or the Youth Bureau, what is the number they should call? 456-2135. Okay. And that is our main number, if you, you know, whoever you want to talk to. Nancy Kelly runs our, you know, is the person you would talk to for our wraparound toddler tales and caring connection. Um, myself or Barb Mahaney with regard to any of the Youth Advisory Board events or about the Youth Advisory Board, um, summer camp, 4-H, babysitting, and Lisa Haywood Drake also for babysitting. If they want a bit more information, they can go on the town website. Yes, at www.colony.org slash youth. I believe it's slash youth. Youth com, it says youth here. Com, C O M. Okay, for so community okay. center, yes. Okay, but anyway, if you go to the main page, you can always you click departments the link. Departments, and then you would go, right, you would go to. Um, okay, the great. Well, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. I learned a lot today, and I've worked yeah. for the town for a while. So. And I feel like I'm forgetting something, but I think, I, think I, I think that's it. I do think. Perhaps we'll plug in another time, and we'll keep yeah. people posted as to the events that are going on. Right, and the here. events are. I know the Saint Anne's, um, the Saint Anne's collection is on, is on the station here, right. and I know the Christmas tree lighting is also. So I mean, there's different, uh, you right. know, things. We we try to send the flyers out. Get the word right yeah, out. Yeah, get there. the word Good. right out. Good. So. Thanks again, Mary. Thank you, Bob. And thanks for joining me on Getting to Know You. I hope you like the show, and we'll join us next week. Have a good week. Welcome to Channel 17, the Town of Colony Government Channel.